Hey everybody. Today I want to talk to you about another question that I seem to see a lot of beginners asking. And that question is, what kind of gear do I need for a backpacking trip? So if this is a question you have, you'll probably want to consider a few variables. The first question you're going to want to ask is, where are we going? And the second question you're going to want to ask is, what is the weather going to be like while we're out there? Obviously the temperature plays a huge role into how much gear you need or what type of gear you need. And then the third question you're going to want to ask is, how long are we staying and what's the water situation like? All right, so once you've got those things sorted out, that can help you better choose gear that's tailored to your trip. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to start with is what's called your big three. That's your backpack, your shelter, and your sleep system. If you're going to an area that doesn't have a lot of trees, like a granite bald or something, then you can't take a hammock. If you're going to an area where you're planning on encountering rain, you wanna make sure that the rain fly on your tent or your rain tarp or whatever kind of rain shelter you're using is going to be one that works well. Likewise, if you're going to somewhere that's either cold or warm, you wanna tailor your sleeping bag and sleeping pad to those conditions. And then also the length of your trip matters because if you're going out for anything other than a couple of days, something like a 30 liter pack is more than likely not gonna be enough for you. So as it relates to weather, you'll also wanna consider what type of clothing do you need? Do you need a rain jacket? Do you need base layers? Do you just need shorts? Do you need rain pants? If you're gonna be hiking in water all day, you may wanna consider waterproof socks. I'm actually wearing base layers, an insulated layer, and waterproof socks right now. And you'll also need to consider what type of shoes you need. I have a video on trail running shoes versus hiking boots, and I'll make sure to leave a link for that right here. I'm gonna wait this out, and we'll see. I'm really close to Chapita Lake. If there's even a 10% chance of rain, you should probably be taking rain gear. A lot of these areas we recreate in don't have accurate weather forecasts, so you'll likely be using the weather for the nearest town, and a lot of times that can be very inaccurate. And while I'm on the subject of weather, if you're hiking somewhere that's very exposed or high elevation, you might want to consider sunglasses, sunscreen, a sun hoodie, a sun hat, or whatever you need to shield yourself from the sun. I feel like sun protection is highly underrated and you see a lot of people that come back from backpacking trips unexpectedly burnt. And then lastly, for the things you're wearing, I always take a change of socks and underwear because it's something really easy and lightweight to take. And on that note, you may wanna consider a dry set of base layers or clothes to sleep in. Sleeping in wet clothes can be dangerous or just downright uncomfortable. And with that being said, don't overpack clothes. You don't need three changes of clothes for a three-day backpacking trip. Clothes can get super heavy really fast, and you'll find out when you're out there, you're gonna get dirty and stinky, and it's just something that you're gonna have to get used to. And you also wanna make sure that you're making weight-conscious choices when it comes to clothes. Things like denim and corduroy and those heavier materials add up very fast. Now getting back to some of your more core items, you'll wanna consider what type of food do you want to take? Do you want to take a whole cook system like a stove with fuel and freeze dried backpacking food? Or would you prefer to take just grab and go type food for a shorter backpacking trip? This all comes down to personal preference and I do have a video on what type of food do I need for a backpacking trip. Just remember, if you're hiking somewhere where there's not a lot of water availability, you may want to consider something other than freeze-dried backpacking food because that'll take up a lot of your water. And also, spare yourself the embarrassment of eating like a caveman and bring your utensils. Next, I don't care what anybody tells you or how fresh the water source is where you're going, you need to take a water filter with you. The problem with this is people are under the misconception that just because you're in the mountains, you can drink the water straight out of the stream. And while that would be true, the problem is sometimes something like an animal dying upstream or someone going to the bathroom and not properly burying it can contaminate the water source you're using. So while it may be fresh drinkable water, it could become contaminated really easily. 
And also, when you're filtering water, make sure that you always have a separate collection vessel. What that means is what you're collecting water in is not what you're filtering water into. What I use is a Canuck Vecto bag, and that's just a separate bag that I screw my Sawyer Mini filter onto, and then I'll squeeze that water into a smart water bottle so I have a clean drinking vessel. So next, I think everybody needs to carry some sort of emergency kit. They make a lot of lightweight kits for backpacking, and for a general backpacking trip, I don't think you need a huge emergency kit, but I do think things like ibuprofen or Imodium are very underrated when it comes to emergency kits. And if you're just taking a couple of band-aids, I think you could do a little better than that. Another thing you'll need to consider is taking a compass and a GPS. I personally like to have a compass at all times just in case, because as we know, we can't always rely on technology. But at the very least, make sure you have a dependable GPS and maybe a map. And it's not required, but it's definitely nice to have something like a Garmin inReach Mini satellite communicator, especially if you're going way out into the backcountry. By the way, some people may consider this part of their emergency kit, but do not forget toilet paper. And also, make sure to bring a trowel or something that you can dig a proper cat hole with. And if you're not familiar with how to properly bury your waste, please do some research on Leave No Trace. And lastly, for what I consider your more core essential items, consider taking bear spray, especially if you're in bear country. I take bear spray on pretty much every backpacking trip I go on. Although I may not be in bear country, there's a lot of other things like mountain lions or moose. When you're in the back country, you're more than likely hiking through some other animal's territory. So just remember that. So I think I've got two more items and these are luxury items and then I'll be done with this video. My one luxury item that I personally always take on backpacking trips is a more full-size pillow. And what I mean by more full-size pillow is it's not the pillow that you sleep with at home, but it is better than an inflatable pillow. And number two, down booties. I don't like to have cold feet when I'm sleeping and down booties are really lightweight and they add a ton of warmth to your feet while you're sleeping. So for me, they're pretty essential. Also, down booties can help dry out your feet overnight, but I won't get into all that right now. Please don't forget, this is not the end all be all backpacking list. What works for me may not work for you, and backpacking gear is very personal. Please make sure to recreate responsibly, leave no trace, and do your own research. Thanks for watching today's video, guys. I hope you got some useful information. If you liked today's video, make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. And leave me a comment if you have a favorite luxury item or you feel that I left out an item that you always take backpacking with you. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.